It's fast becoming the rule in modern politics that if the establishment are attacking you, it's a clear indication that you are doing something right. From Tommy Robinson to Alex Jones, if they weren't telling the truth in an effective manner, the ruling class just would not care. As they say, you only cop flack when you are over the target. It's also true that Australians have never trusted their politicians less. Such is the result of endless lies and acting directly against the interests of the Australian people. So, when the Australian Senate recently decided to censure Senator Fraser Anning over his comments regarding the Christchurch incident, it was a fair indication that his comments were indeed truthful and accurate. When the worst kinds of people disagree with what you're doing, it only means you are doing the right thing. From the ABC, and I quote, Politicians from across the political divide joined forces to condemn the independent senator with the motion passing the upper house after more than an hour of debate. The leaders of the major parties in the Senate, Liberal Matthias Cormann and Labor's Penny Wong led the debate, condemning Senator Fraser Anning, end quote. You may want to know what a censure motion is. After all, the Senate have made a huge deal over it. It's essentially just Parliament voting a very strong condemnation. They are formally stating that they disprove of what someone has said. It has no real world consequences. In other words, they just said, He's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. The Senate spent over an hour debating and explaining why Anning's statements were so very bad and naughty. They ranged from frightening assaults on our democracy. And I say hate speech cannot be defended on grounds of freedom of speech because it is an attack on our democracy, because it inflicts real and direct harm. Hate speech is inimical to democracy. We can't normalise it through a concept of better ideas. To the downright hysterical. You are a disgrace. And don't smile at me. Don't smile at the rest of us. People lost their lives. And you think it's a joke. You think it's a joke. What an absolute disgrace. He had no right to have the privilege to stand in this place and spout that hatred, that racism. To be an apologist for terrorism. For murder. He is not fit to represent the Australian people. He's not fit to call himself Australian. He is not us. The fact that Penny Wong a very high-ranking politician can attack our most fundamental liberty, a liberty that millions of European men died for without any criticism, merely highlights how corrupt our political establishment are. Freedom of speech is not something anyone has the right to assault in such blatant disregard for our ancestors' sacrifice. But I guess they aren't her ancestors. As for Sarah Fascist Young, if being offensive bigots warranted suspension, the Greens would be in a lot of trouble. One thing the Senate didn't once discuss were Fraser Anning's actual words and why what he said was something worthy of censure. Not once did they counter his arguments, nor did they even quote a single word he said. They simply cried, and moaned about how offensive it was that he dare say things that they don't want him to say. There is a very good reason for this. It's because nothing he said was actually wrong. When the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. Some dishonest far-left propagandists even went so far as to claim that he blamed the victims. For the attacks. In fact, he resoundingly condemned the attacks and stated that he was utterly opposed to violence and the actions of the gunmen. Nor did he once blame the victims. What he did do was rightly point out the fact that if it wasn't for mass immigration to the West, then this kind of attack just wouldn't happen. He called out the violence built within the political religious ideology that is Islam. The closing part of his statement even quoted the Bible, Matthew 26.52 All they that take the sword 
shall perish by the sword. Nothing in his statement was wrong, and nothing came even close to warranting any condemnation, at least in a sane world. Quite the contrary. If those in charge had our best interests at heart, they would all share the exact same sentiments. As George Orwell famously stated, in times of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. It's not like people in Australia don't have access to the internet either. We can all see for ourselves exactly what Anning said and make our own minds up. If we really want, we can hear the response of the man himself. And here it is. Uh, this censure motion against me is a blatant attack on free speech. It is also an exercise in left-wing virtue signalling of the worst kind. Of course, it is, this is exactly the kind of self-righteous left-wing intolerance of alternative views that you would expect from an extremist party like the Greens, Mr President. What is shocking is that it is supposedly a supposedly Liberal Prime Minister who is leading the charge, joining hands with Labor and the Greens. The specific reasons for moving mo uh, a motion to censure me are barely coherent. The motion calls on the Senate to censure me for supposedly inflammatory and divisive comments, seeking to attribute blame to the victims of a horrific crime. What inflammatory and divisive comments, Mr President? What blame did I attribute to the victims? I said nothing of the sort. Following this shocking attack on two mosques in Christchurch on the 15th of March, I issued a media statement condemning the shooting and the shooter in the strongest possible terms. However, after putting the immediate blame where it belonged, I looked for contributing causes. I, I identified that immigration program that allowed Muslim fanatics to migrate to New Zealand was a key enabler of community violence. The claim that this somehow blames the victims is absurd. Mr. President. My real crime, of course, is that I simply told the truth at a time when the left-wing political, political and media elites least wanted to hear it, saying that, freedom, uh, that free speech is conditional on staying within the bounds that those in power stipulate. As Minister Birmingham said yesterday, is actually to say that there is no free speech at all. He is, of course, correct. The idea that he blamed the victims is utterly absurd and the only crime he is guilty of is telling the truth in a time when the ruling class are wholly dependent on lies. Despite all the bluster and the fact that this censure motion was almost meaningless, Anning did lose something tangible. From News Limited, and I quote, Qantas has expelled Fraser Anning from its exclusive Chairman's Lounge Club in the wake of yesterday's dramatic censure motion in the Senate. The plush waiting room reserved for the top ranks of politics and business is invite only. Membership is often offered to members of parliament, but Qantas decided to review Anning's access after his comments on the Christchurch terror attack. Now he has been kicked out. End quote. Since when was it the place of an airline to comment or act on the words of an Australian senator? Will Qantas now remove privileges of the Greens who have said some of the most horrendous and offensive things imaginable? This is an entirely unacceptable action by Qantas and their far-left activist CEO, Alan Joyce. His job is to make sure planes arrive on time and in one piece. It is not ever to lecture on political discourse, but such is the age that we live in. The ruling class protects its own, and Qantas benefits from the current regime, so they will protect it in any way that they can. There's also another possible reason the establishment are getting so hysterical, other than the fact that Anning is telling the truth without shame, of course. That explanation is that he's popular. From Pedestrian TV, a day before the censure motion, and I quote, In a week, where openly racist Australian Senator Fraser Anning is facing the possibility of a two-week suspension from Parliament, he and fellow far-right politicians like Pauline Hanson and Mark Latham 
have one thing to be happy about, Facebook. Using analytics software CrowdTangle, which allows the monitoring of Facebook pages by multiple metrics, Pedestrian TV has found Australia's far right social media presence has experienced unprecedented growth in 2019. Compared with most of Australia's other political Facebook pages, Fraser Anning, Pauline Hanson and former One Nation Senator Malcolm Roberts all feature in the top five performers for the year when it comes to total interactions on the platform. Interactions accounts for things like shares, comments, likes and reactions. Anning has seen his page grow by 116% since the start of the year with millions of video views and over 1 million total interactions. Since January 1st, Anning has picked up 62,317 page likes, which brings him into the top 10 Australian political pages based on likes alone. First place in that race, Pauline Hanson with 259,534, end quote. So despite the relentless attacks from the mainstream media and the government, and the ruling class in general, Fraser Anning has only grown in popularity, at least on Facebook. His page is the most interacted with of any other politician in the country. He's also getting overwhelming support in the comment sections on non-left mainstream media websites. His Facebook page even gained 2,000 additional followers in the day since the Senate voted to censure him. Sure, Facebook is a terrible site and everyone should delete their account, but that should tell you something. The people who still use the cesspit like what Fraser Anning has to say. Even if he doesn't win re-election, it's clear that a large number of Australians are in fact right behind him. He has an obvious groundswell of support, and his supporters are more active than any other group. This worries the establishment because they gain their own positions by being as anti-white and dishonest as possible, and many of them have property portfolios dependent on mass immigration. The rise of Fraser Anning represents a very real threat to their wealth and privilege. And the fact that he speaks for a large and growing number of Australians obviously scares them. Even if he doesn't win re-election, it's not like his supporters are going anywhere. They will eagerly await their next champion, and by then, their numbers will be even greater. The populist nationalist movement is growing worldwide, and the next guy probably won't be as nice as Fraser Anning either. Everywhere in the West, we are seeing people wake up to the globalist cancer that's taken hold, and the inevitable reaction that is building. Nationalist populism is not going anywhere. It's here to stay, and will only continue to grow because ordinary people are over their unrepresentative globalist elites. Rather than an outlier, Fraser Anning is just the Australian manifestation of a phenomenon we can now observe across the entire world, but especially in the West. Even Canada, the home of the world's biggest soy boy, Justin Trudeau, is seeing its own nationalist populist uprising. On the same day the Senate voted to censure Fraser Anning, the Australian Electoral Commission registered his political party. Fraser Anning's Conservative National Party can now take donations, volunteers, field candidates in any seat it likes, and you can register as a member if you choose to. The man himself had this to say, and I quote, I want to thank every single person who has called my office to express their support. I also want to make a special mention to everyone who contacted the AEC expressing their displeasure at the protracted registration process. I am certain that the numerous calls and emails helped finalise the party's registration. End quote. Fraser Anning is popular. His base is energised and dedicated. 
he tells the truth without shame, and he refuses to back down. For his courage, the ruling class smear and slander him relentlessly. But, like Greek fire, it only makes him more popular and stronger. White advocate Jared Taylor succinctly explained this phenomenon recently in an interview with Faith Goldie. This goes to show you how terrified the opposition is of our views. Uh, they have the disadvantage of being wrong, we have the advantage of being right. And so it's of course in their interest to silence us whenever possible, but it's too late. It's too late. The truth is out in too many different domains. My Twitter account may be shut down, and some of my books may be banned, but there are many other Twitter accounts, many other books. It's whack-a-mole. They can't keep up with us. And because we're right, and because what we say makes so much intuitive and logical sense, then there's just there's no stopping us, no matter how much they try. But they're getting desperate. And every orthodoxy lashes out in the most vicious ways when it's about to die. And I think we're seeing that right now. As the establishment loses control of the narrative and the people, we can expect more of this exact same lashing out. Like drug addicts, they see their dopamine hit of power and wealth at risk. Thus, are desperate to make sure they don't lose it. Men like Fraser Anning represent the prospect of a cold turkey withdrawal, and they are desperate to prevent that at any cost. Be wary, there are surely many in the ruling class who would rather burn everything to the ground than allow true freedom to reign again. As for Fraser Anning, he did absolutely nothing wrong. I hope you enjoyed the video, share the truth around, and I'll see ya when I see ya. What are your thoughts on the, the parliament? Oh, no, I hope it's not too painful. What's Mr Morrison going to give me a flogging with his lace hanky or something like that, is it? I'm not sure. Oh!